Good evening, Willowdale. Happy Monday night. Hopefully you are winding down from the first day of the week, sitting there with a warm cup of hot chocolate perhaps, uh, and hopefully you can put the busy day behind you and hang out with us for a while. We have a very interesting show today. I'm sure many of you have wondered, what are young people thinking these days? And so tonight we get to chat with three wonderful students who uh, go to school right here in our neighborhood and they have been volunteering with us throughout the past summer and all the way to uh, this past weekend's Christmas market. So we're so excited to chat with them. We wanna find out more what they're thinking, what they're doing, what do they care about? And hopefully this will give us greater insight on the next generation. So let us give a warm welcome to Rachel, Ibrahim, and Akshaya. Hi guys. Hi. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's kind of like a uh, group hangout here. <laughs> We've never done a, an interview with three at the same time, but I think this is good. So why don't each of you tell us a little bit about um, why you love volunteering? So let's start with Rachel. Uh, I guess I like volunteering because um, it really opens, like kind of opens my eyes to my community where I live and like kind of what's happening in the world. I, to me, like my world is very small. So it's just really interesting to like, talk to other people and experience different things. And it's just really gratifying as well because I'm helping people and I'm also improving my own like social skills as well. So yeah, That's it's also great. really fun. That's wonderful, thanks. How about you, Ibrahim? Uh, I like volunteering because like, uh, like it's really like fun giving back to like the community, you know, what NeighborLink does. Like for example, the Thanksgiving event we had where we gave gave the turkeys back to people. It was really like, I just, it felt really good doing that. Thanks for sharing. And Aksaya? Um, It's really fun to meet new people. And also it's nice to see people happy. So when you're volunteering, it's seeing the community happy is really nice. Yeah, and you know, you guys made a huge difference on Saturday night for our first ever We Love Willowdale Christmas Market. And, you know, I saw so many smiling faces, families. It's been a long time uh, since we've had a community event where we could all be together outdoors. I could just see it meant a lot to people. How has it been for you guys? Cause like it was a quite a long lockdown for high school students last year. Uh, and then, you know, is kind of because we knew a lot of students were struggling with anxiety and isolation from the lockdowns that we created the youth mobilization network because we just knew that it you know people needed to get out to connect with other people so how was that experience of high school in lockdown last year maybe exaya you can start honestly i felt really like alone during most of the time like i did chat with people online but it wasn't the same of like meeting people in person yeah for sure how about you ibrahim i felt like really closed off from like the outside world because like everything was just like inside and like just going outside was like rare too and like the whole online school thing like personally i like i didn't like it and it really like changed like myself, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I do feel like it, it was a dark place for a lot of people to be so disconnected from the outside world, both physically and emotionally and socially. How about you, Rachel? Um, I hated it, honestly. Like, you know, in the beginning I was thinking, you know, I was, I'm a very homebody kind of person and uh, at the time, like even before high school and during like ninth grade, I like I didn't go out that much. Like I I would just go straight home after school and just kind of do my thing. But after being like just isolated so much, it was just 
it was horrible. Like I thought, you know what? I could, this would give me a chance to like indulge in my own hobbies and discover a new part of myself. That did not happen. <laughs> um, I just like, I just like, I felt like a bum because I did like nothing all day and I just lazed around and I felt horrible and I can't even go outside. So that is, and it was just really cramped. So not the best thing. <laughs> Mm hmm. So kind of like the youth mobilization network was formed just as we were opening up. What did participating in that experience of, you know, hanging out with your peers and serving the neighborhood? What did that mean to you in that transition period? And maybe Ibrahim, you can start. Oh, uh... all the new like events like because i would sign up with my friends and like you know just going outside and doing like those things like uh it was like really fun like it was like because we were so closed off for so long and it really felt fun going outside again and doing stuff like that mm -hmm. how about you rachel um so when i first started like my first time volunteering was with neighborlink in like early may like it was still COVID. So my mom was really anxious and I was like, mom, this is my chance to like go outside. And I was really excited because what, like, like I said before, it's my chance to go outside again. Oh my gosh. And like, um, I said before, I'm a homebody a lot and I didn't like really hang out after school. Like I do now, I guess. Um, but like, I, I wasn't really that social. I was really quiet and I tried to avoid like as many social interactions as possible. Like if someone like really nice came up to me, it's like, hi, I would be like, hi. And I would walk away. <laughs> um, so like, I was really nervous when I first started volunteering because like, especially with like youth mobilization, like, okay, people my age, I think it should be okay, but I'm still scared. How do I like present myself towards them? But actually like, you know, people are a lot nicer than I expected. So yeah, it felt good. <laughs> Well, Rachel, I feel like we've really seen a journey for you in the last, you know, even just five months um, from that person that I first met on Mother's Day. It was like the single mom's Mother's Day, the first yeah. time you volunteered with us. And you were amazing. You were <laughs> really you. great. Yeah. Uh, checking in all our sponsored baskets uh, and welcoming people. Uh, but from that kind of shy person, to now, you know, you often are leading a team, you're telling groups of people what to do, there's been a huge growth. And I'm sure it's also just you are getting older. But yeah. in a short period of time, I feel like you've learned quite a few new skills. Would, would you say that? Yeah. It's like how to interact with people and like, what what is like, okay to say, and like, that is handleable and what and how to like, clear how to give out clear instructions and that people would you know pay attention listen and then like boom everyone is has instructions everyone is ready to go we can finish this like task as quickly as possible and efficiently as possible and everyone's happy well you do it with a great personality and i think a lot of people really want to follow when you are leading. So <laughs> I hope that you see your growth as a leader. Yeah, I just try my best. I've never really saw myself as a leader. I've always saw myself as like a follower because I feel like it's a lot easier to just follow instructions. And like, again, I'm a really independent type person. So being like attempting at this whole leadership thing is like really new to me, but like, it's kind of fun. Yeah, because you get to create your own ideas. Uh, that come, you know, when you're able to mobilize people. And Exaya, she, you, you won the award for most hours volunteered this past summer. I think you were already at 90 uh, at the end of the summer, and now you've continued beyond the summer. What compels you to uh, be so active? I mean, we're so grateful and inspired, but what is that internal motivation? Well, like, when I first started volunteering, I was just, like, really scared to do it. Like, I was scared to meet new people and, like, actually talk to them because, like, I don't usually talk to new people. Like, I just stay to myself. And 
but like once I got to like got to meet new people and they were like pretty nice I got like motivated to like keep on doing it also like it was really nice helping out in the neighborhood and seeing like our community become better yeah you guys did some amazing work this past summer you did multiple community cleanups and then you guys organized a huge uh, electronics, battery recycling, and food bank collection event, bread and batteries. What was it like to, you know, imagine something and bring it to fruition? Maybe, uh, Ibrahim, you could share. Oh, uh, okay. The yard sale was like, it was really amazing. Like so much people came, like, honestly, like me first I'm like, I'm like, maybe like 10 people, five people show up. No, the whole community showed up. It was really amazing seeing how like everyone came together and it was like starting selling stuff. It was really amazing. Yeah, we were so uh, excited to see that many people engaged on one of the hottest days of the summer. <laughs> I was worried about that, but somehow no one died of heat stroke that day. <laughs> How about you, Xayah? What was it like for you to just see these events come to fruition from idea to completion? It was actually like really new to me. I've never done anything like this. And I actually thought like when we were doing these, like it was like really big to me when we did them. Like it, I, I never expected like the entire community to pitch in and it was really magical. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember the weight of the batteries that was collected, but it's pretty astounding and the number of computers that were collected and just even how motivated everyone was to make the community a better place to contribute environmentally to help with cleanups. How about your vantage point, Rachel? What was it like for you to see all of these things come to be? Oh, yeah. yeah, I think it's the same thing. Like seeing, I it's I think I had like the same view as like Ibrahim. Like I I just thought, you know, maybe like 10, 15 people might come, but like the whole community shows up. I'm like, wow, okay, this is um new. And it was it was really hot that day. So um, I think I got like slight heat stroke, but I was okay. Um, but I think the biggest thing to me, I was like working, I was under the tent because of like the heat stroke. So um, I was still like around like the batteries and there was like a lot of batteries. And um, so I was helping with like measuring like the weight of like certain baskets and stuff. And like something, I think there was a basket about like, or like some sort of container that was about like this big and this tall. And I was like, you know, I can pick that up. I could not pick that up. It, it was like, I don't know, it, it weighed a lot for me. I was like, yeah, I can't pick this up. Can someone help? So, and like help having to weigh the batteries was a lot too. So I just kind of like recorded it, but yeah, so lots of batteries, especially it was like a food drive that day too. So like not only was there like so many like batteries and electronics, but like so much food was donated to like the food drive and it was just incredible. Yeah, um, actually, so 200 kilograms of batteries were uh, brought in for recycling. There were 36 printers, 15 desktops, 33 laptops, 16 monitors, and over 580 pounds of food. So that's a lot of uh, impact. And what do you think you've learned through all of this that translate back to your own dreams for yourself or uh, how you approach your other extracurricular or, or schoolwork? Um, I guess like, I guess, it's all, I think it, it's all about attitude, really. It's like if you put if you like face or walk into something with like a good attitude, like this is this is going to be fun. It's going to be OK. As long as I put my best effort into this, it's going to be great. I feel like that's the best way into doing something or anything in general. Mm -hmm. So having the confidence to just be able to pitch in mm -hmm. and and I hope that, you know, one thing that I hope you learned is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, sometimes if you're trying to get perfect, it's hard to get out of the gate, 
but just doing it and learning by doing is maybe the best way to have impact. Ibrahim, have you uh, learned anything through this experience that you feel has translated to, you know, your dreams or the things that you're doing right now? I think it shows that like, if you put like enough effort into things, you will like achieve like great things. Example, like the food bank, like we donated so much food and stuff like that. And the bread and batteries, we recycled so much instead of that going to like the trash and like polluting certain areas. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's I think it's always great to remember that we can make a difference. Uh, because if we look at the world and all its problems, it can feel overwhelming. I, I feel great compassion for your generation because uh, I heard a term the other day and it made me really realize that for young people today, you know, you grow up with something called climate anxiety. So with the influx of all this news about things that it could be quite overwhelming and maybe disempowering to hear about these huge problems that require the whole world to, to pitch in in order to actually make a difference. Uh, and for young people to grow up in that context, it could be very daunting. And when things are daunting, you could feel maybe powerless. Uh, and I think some young people start to feel depressed. But what you guys did was you took action and you did make a difference. Um, so how has that impacted you, Exaya? I think that I've just learned to be like brave. Like um, you can't just be scared for everything and like not do it because you're scared of the consequences or what would happen if, I, if you do do it. But like once I started volunteering, I learned like sometimes you need to take a bit of risk to just accomplish what you need. And what would you say to other youth who haven't yet volunteered or who are maybe nervous about putting themselves out there? What would your words of encouragement be for them? I would just say like, do what they think is the best and do what they think would help others and that would help themselves as well and not be scared or like think about what others would think. You're right. It's really like a win-win, right? You're helping others, but you're also helping yourself because you're learning and growing at the same time. How about you, Ibrahim? If you're like on the basketball courts uh, and you know some of your friends are there who maybe haven't volunteered yet, what would you say to them? I would say definitely go for me. You you definitely feel new experiences especially with neighbor link it's like really fun experiences and if they're nervous i'll just tell them like like when you're scared in life that's exactly when you do things like you just gotta like jump ahead and do go live life to the fullest you know you know don't just like reserve yourself because you might miss out on certain opportunities that you might regret in, in the future those are good words, not just for students, I think for everyone that we should be courageous and and just get out there and try new things, right? How about you, Rachel? Um, I think I'm going to pull this from like my friend. I was talking to my friend before about how like scared and anxious I was about just a lot of things in general. And I would overthink a lot. So it would just overwhelm me in like one to 100. So then they would... So they would tell me, okay, you know what you should do? You should, you should make, you should do things that push you out of your comfort zone. Because if you stay in your comfort zone, you'll never be able to experience anything. And you'll just be in that same cycle of just kind of like repeating that, like an anxiousness, like, okay, what if this happens? What if that happens? That fear, that kind of like horrible feeling, but like, if you like step outside your comfort zone, you might realize it's not that bad. And like, you, you kind of get used to it. It's like exposure therapy, I think. Um, <laughs> it's kind of just expose yourself and like, kind of get used to it. And like, you know what, it doesn't affect you as much. So like, it's just kind of, you build a tougher skin and it's like better for you because you're learning new things and you just care less about what people think about you. In fact, what people think about you is like 
like, for example, imaginary audience or just society in general is what scares people a lot. Like it scares them away from doing all sorts of things. It's like, I'd be like, oh, I really want to try this out. But what would like people think? What would my friends think? And stuff like that. Like, for example, I was really nervous, like going into this interview as well. I was like thinking, what should I say? What if my friends join or whatever? But I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. It's not, I'm just going to talk and have fun. Well, I think the advice that all of you are giving applies to adults and to life in general. And I hope that you keep this memory of this idea that, you know, you need to get out of your comfort zone, take action. I, I really think, especially when it comes to things like climate anxiety, that the only way to lessen your anxiety is to take action because when you are participating and helping alleviate the problems that you're worried about, even if they can't be solved with a flick of a switch, at least you know that you're helping to move the dial, right? Uh, as long as it's moving in a positive direction. Now, one thing that's really unique is that, you know, the three of you are from different schools. And it's not always the case that students from different schools get the chance to interact and hang out uh, and, you know, also contribute to the community together. What has it been like to serve with students across different schools in Willowdale? Um, Ibrahim, maybe you can start. Um, I don't really see like, a, I mean, meeting new people was the good part, like just from a cost of schools, especially with the COVID, like I didn't really get to meet new people in my school either. And like before we started school in the summer, like we didn't start school and meet new people. It's just like seeing other people as like really refreshing, you know, like. How about you, Rachel? Um, for, for me, like meeting, because like we're all like youth, so like we're roughly around the same age. It didn't really matter to me like that we're in like different schools. Like even like people who like, oh wow, we go to the same school? I didn't know that. Because <laughs> again, I was like really like shy. So all I knew was like my best friends, my close friends, my friends that like I went to middle school with and that was just about it and or like anyone that's like on like the president council or something so they are like they, they're kind of known in the school and that that was it so I was like oh you're in, you're you're in my grade oh wow okay it, so so I didn't really it's not really that much of a difference of like meeting new people like I was just like oh cool we're, we're just doing this thing together that's awesome so so like different schools didn't exactly like bother me or anything. It's mm -hmm. just like, we're just working together. We're chill. We're having fun. We're making a difference. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> That's awesome. How about you, Exaya? I didn't really see anything different about going to different schools because like we were all technically like teens and like it was pretty much like we, we just working together and having fun. Um, it was just like meeting new people, which was just fun. Yeah, I remember we had a volunteer appreciation at the end of summer and I saw, you know, some of the, some of you guys were playing basketball together and hanging out and that just warmed my heart <laughs> uh, just to see that there were friendships being formed and you don't, maybe you don't know it yet, but actually part of um, success in life is also tied to your network. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Uh, and now that you have met, you know, a wider network, um, I hope that you'll tap into this wider network uh, moving into the future. I wanted to um, chat with you a little bit about Willowdale. What are the things that you love about this community? And I can start with Aksaya. I just love how like everyone in the neighborhood is really helpful and they're really nice and caring to each other. And which isn't like in many other neighborhoods, which I've been to, which is really, which is really new and good. Yeah, I do also feel like we have a very 
high concentration of kind people in our neighborhood. Um, how about you, Rachel? Um, I'm not exactly sure because I think within this neighborhood, I guess I would say like my friends from like like school or just people I see around, like they're like, like I said, like you guys said before, um, they're all like really nice. So, and um, I guess because of volunteering too, my eyes have like really been open. Cause like, even like with volunteering, you get to meet a lot of people, but I still feel like that's like not the full community. So like, imagine like how little people that I was like, okay, there's like this people, there's like this person I know, and there's like that. And I don't know, I, I didn't really know a lot of my community. I just, I was like, I just kind of kept to myself. So like, it's just really interesting seeing how there's so many different people. And like, it's like, wow, we live in the same community. I didn't know that. Like, I don't even know my neighbors. <laughs> well, hopefully, you know, that will change over time because I think life is better when we know our neighbors. That's something that's really important to us at NeighborLink is just fostering more neighborly connections. And how about you, Ibrahim? What do you love about this neighborhood? Uh, I agree with Yusuf because like, we have a really good neighborhood and it's just like really nice like getting to know each other and stuff like that. Like I met so many new people and like they're like into my life now. And I, I like I've made so much new friendships that like I really like and it's really good getting to like know everyone in the community because you feel more like one and what do you think this neighborhood needs more of more of mm -hmm. Mm. how could we improve willowdale oh i don't really know but like i think if we do more events like neighbor link does i think it would improve a lot just making more connectivity that yeah. people will know their neighbors and care for their neighbors more. Yeah. How about you, Xai? What do you think Willowdale needs more of? Well, I think that it's just improving more connections and between more neighbors and just helping more people, which is just improving on what we already have right now which is already really amazing mm -hmm. building on our foundation right yeah. and rachel i think events are nice too but i think one of my favorite things about like i think one of my favorite things is like something really simple like just like saying hi to someone on the streets like hello um, the weather is nice today or something or have a nice day or something like that. I feel like that is like, it's really small and like really simple. But I feel like if we have a lot of that, it's like, it kind of, it makes the world a better place. In my opinion, it's just being nice to someone, even like complete stranger. It's like, wow, oh my gosh, they're, they, I don't know this person. They're just nice to me. Like it, it's a good feeling to me personally. You know what, that actually is really connected to an idea that we are incubating for 2022, uh, which completely resonates with what you said, Rachel. So we are uh, planning to declare 2022 the year of kindness in Willowdale. And so all of our events, the um initiatives that we run as well as inviting businesses and schools to think about how can we foster more kindness in our neighborhood so i look forward to you know having you guys be a part of that and you know dreaming up you know maybe every school could have a kindness committee and the you know doing random acts of kindness like how could we so more kindness into Willowdale for 2022 at a time when I think a lot of people need a little more kindness and a little more hope. So we have a question here from someone who grew up in Willowdale uh, and he actually has a fan club of people who love Willowdale. So there's a Facebook group called Willowdale in the 70s, and there's 18,000, or make, that was the last time I checked, it's probably even more now, <laughs> uh, people who love Willowdale, grew up in Willowdale, uh, and he wants to ask you guys, where are your favorite places to hang out? So maybe, Ibrahim, you can start. 
Uh, I love the North York Center. I love going to the Cineplex movies. I go there. I love going there and watching movies. I probably go there like three times a month. Uh, I love going to this buffet in North York Center. It's called Ichiban. I think it's a Japanese. Oh, yeah. Japanese buffet. Yeah, I love going there with me and my friends. <laughs> I've never personally went there, <laughs> but I walk past it like every day. <laughs> yeah, me and my friends, whenever we go there, we order like 100 plates. I, like they're probably scared of us at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Sounds good. How about you, Aksaya? Um, my, me and my friends really like going to Princess Park, which is like it's just nice hanging outside because it looks really pretty from the outside. And also, like there's a small like I think it's the second cup, which is really nice to like buy a drink and just sit outside and talk. Yeah, that does have a very nice outdoor section that overlooks that little parquet that's uh, on the west side of Doris. It is a good hangout place. How about you, Rachel? Um, I really like going to libraries. <laughs> like it's when I was in middle school, I would go to the library with my friends and like there's like this very back corner and I know that the library is supposed to be a quiet place where people are probably reading, but we were so loud. Oh my goodness. We were like in the back corner of the library where there's like, it's like, okay, this is, this is, this was not good. I'm thinking back now, but like, it was fun to us. Cause like it was the very back corner and um, it was like where the escape exit was. So um, we would just kind of sit there and sometimes we would like play smash and we were like kind of loud. We got like a, a lot of complaints, but like, um, being in a library is like, it's, it's kind of like, like my happy place. It's like, it, it's quiet if I like go there myself and like, I'm kind of like, I'm really independent personally. So I would just go to like certain sections and I would like just sit there and I would read a book and stuff. And yeah, other than that, I would, I like going to Starbucks. Yeah. I would spend all my allowance there. <laughs> I think uh, everyone has been really impressed with everything you guys have shared and just to see the tremendous uh, initiative that you all carry. Do you have some dreams that you already know for when you finish high school? Uh, Exia, what would you, what do you picture yourself doing, you know, in five or 10 years? Honestly, I don't know, but like, broadly I just want to get into like a good university and get a profession that might that would serve the community and serve me like in happiness that's a good goal how about you Ibrahim um I would like to, I wanted to one of my dreams is to become a police officer I really want to like do something in life where I can you know give back to the community and like help people and you know protect people that's wonderful. And I think, you know, with what you're doing with us at NeighborLink, it gives you such a great perspective on the world and, and the different pockets of the community that you might not otherwise see, which I hope will inform you as you, you know, work toward your dreams. So that's great. I, would, I can't wait to one day see you patrolling. <laughs> hopefully you'll get to work at 32 Division right here in our neighborhood. Yeah, hopefully. And Rachel? Um, man, I really don't know. Because as a kid, I was like, oh, I want to be this. I want to be that. And then as I grew older, I'm like, I want to be this thing. I want to be that thing. And like, I, I've gotten to the point where like, oh my goodness, I don't know what I want to do. But like, like actually, I, I just want to get, I think, five years from now. Um, I think I'd be in my final year of university, probably. Um, if I'm doing my math right, I don't know, my math not really good, but um, yeah, I think I'd be, hopefully I want to get into like a good university and my goal is just to get like a good job, preferably like something to, that's like interesting and fun, but still allows me to have like a little bit of like me time or some, some time I could like spend with family because family is really important to me. Um, and I would just, now this is going to sound very self-centered of me, but I would like to earn a lot of money. <laughs> that is one of my big goals. Well, you know, we do live in a very expensive city. 
So, you know, it's not completely superficial to have a goal to want to more than just survive, right? Uh, and so that that's okay to acknowledge that. Uh, there is a, oh, there's a someone named Shauna who's saying to Ibrahim, if you do become a, a cop, please be an honest cop and speak up against corruption within the force and your coworkers. Oh yeah, I agree. That's definitely something I want to do. I really want to like change, I like, especially like with the past year with Black Lives Matter, like that's like, I really want to like do something to change that. Like I want to make a really big impact on like making police officers more like, um, you know, like just about equality and stuff like that. I really want to do something like that, yeah. That's great. We need more people who carry the voice of change. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, from what I know, my interactions with you, you will make a difference. Uh, and we are, we'll be grateful for that. And uh, our old friend, <laughs> who's not old, William, is uh, saying hi to you guys. William uh, is a Earl, an Earl Hague student who worked with NeighborLink this past summer, led our youth mobilization team, uh, and is surely going to make a huge impact uh, in our community and in the world in the years to come. Uh, and he already is doing it right now so hey william <laughs> shout out <laughs> well thank you so much for um hanging out with us sharing your dreams and thank you for what you have done in sharing your time your skills your talents with neighborlink north york i feel like we are like a vehicle for you guys but um, you can actually determine the destination to a certain extent so whatever dreams you have for the neighborhood, for the community, maybe, you know, um, with regard to like sowing kindness into our neighborhood, uh, we can start some dreams together in the coming year. Uh, do you want to say anything to close us out? Like, uh, you know, what, uh, uh, how about you share a positive memory that you've had, um, something funny or inspiring or touching that you've had with your volunteering you can take a moment to think about. <laughs> Actually, I have one. Um, I think definitely one of my favorites is uh, when I was doing like park cleanup, I think probably like this was like either my first time doing park cleanup or like one of my first few like park cleanups where I was the one leading. Um, uh, I was like, I was just doing my thing. I was like cleaning up the park and I think it was Hendon, I think it was. Um, they had like a water park and everything. So, and after, and actually during and after I started, like I was cleaning the park, I realized um, water parks and splash pads equals water balloons and people do not pick, af pick up after themselves. So, and that park had a lot of kids. And I meant like, when I mean like kids, like, very young kids, like I'd say like toddlers to uh, young elementary school kind of students. So they were running around barefoot and, you know, having fun while we were sweltering in the hot sun. But anyways, um, uh, so the so I was picking up these like like they were like really small, like water balloons that are like that exploded after like being thrown around. So I was picking them up with like a uh, um, my partner because we I we split ourselves off in like groups so I was with Kavya um she's not with she's not volunteering with us anymore but she was a really nice girl and like I loved talking to her and volunteering and there is this uh, nice lady where she was like oh my gosh are you like cleaning the park thank you and she was like talking about how um she she has like a toddler and they would just see these like colorful like water balloon pieces like these plastic pieces and they would just pick it up and eat it so um it's like really concerning but she was like really happy to see us cleaning up the park and i was like it it's like i said that's like probably the most gratifying feeling of like volunteer it's like someone's like really appreciative or just just any sort of like appreciation that someone is like wow these kids are doing these things and they're like improving the future i was like it was the first time I felt that I'm actually making a difference and an impact. 
Oh, that's a beautiful memory. And yeah, I, I think a lot of moms are probably grateful that you guys did that. Exia, how about you? Um, okay. So this is when like we went postering and um, like when you poster, like the tape usually makes a lot of sound, which causes a lot of attraction. So um, I'm always like, they're only attracted to the sound of the tape and like not actually what we were doing. But like once when me and my friend, which was Evelyn, we went um, postering and um, a person actually came up and asked us like what was on the poster which was like really like um ex like surprising for me because i wasn't actually sure if they were noticing us like doing this and like it made me really happy that people were actually looking at like what we were doing yeah and i will say that uh for meet your neighbor week when we had those yard sales happening i went around to many of the vendors we had uh, over 50 vendors that day. And a lot of them said to me, oh, I found out about this through posters on the street. So you guys made a huge difference in just getting the word out there because that's half the battle when you're trying to engage the community. We, we have no way to, a lot of people aren't on email and we don't have everyone's email address. It's hard to let people know that there are ways that they can engage or volunteer or get help. So what you guys did to help get the word out made a huge difference. And I hope that you know that. And I'm glad that that interaction uh, kind of showed you that you were and are and did make an impact. And Ibrahim, how about you? Uh, I'd also have cases where people would come up to me like, oh, thank you for cleaning and stuff like that. And it would really like, I'd be like, wow, someone's thanking me for this. It would really feel nice. And recently, like uh, with the Christmas event we had, we, they were giving out free hot chocolate and I was really cold. And when I heard him say that, I was like, oh, and I got really excited and it felt really nice just drinking the hot chocolate and with all the lights, it felt really nice. And I hope that when you were doing that, that um, you also had a sense that, wow, I am helping to create this moment for my community. Um, so we couldn't have pulled off that Christmas market without, I think there were over 25, if not 30 volunteers to make it happen. And each of you were so amazing, um, not just in the practical help, but just the friendliness that you guys bring. Uh, and also the humility that you have, you know, your willingness to do even the smallest of tasks in order to help make the event successful. So thank you. Thank you to all three of you. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for rallying other students to join us. And um, I look forward to sharing more memories with you. We still have uh, two more events coming up uh, before the end of the year. We have a uh, Christmas hamper distribution on December 18th and we have Christmas food hub. So we're giving out turkeys again, Ibrahim. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we look forward to seeing you guys there. And on behalf of our community, thank you for being youth that are engaged, that care, uh, and they're making a difference. And we are going to wrap it up. All right. <laughs> this is a cue to Grace, <laughs> who is producing, yes. <laughs>